Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, or good evening, depending on where you are, I suppose. Um, there's quite a crowd of us here today for one of these webinars. We just count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of us, including me. Uh, so our discussion should go quite well. Uh, I wanted to start the webinar this morning by just showing you a few things that are available to me about how the SafeWards.net website is uh, is being used. Uh, and what you should be able to see on your screen at the moment uh, is the uh, the monitoring that I can do about the live use of the site. So we can see that, uh, well, there was one person on the site in Germany, but they've just logged off um, earlier on this morning. Uh, let me just switch off my email so that we won't get that interruption. Earlier on this morning, most, most of the contacts come from the UK. If we look at the uh, worldwide location of where people are using SafeWords from, then you can see the top spot is the UK. Uh, within the past month, two and a half thousand contacts on the website. Uh, but you lot there in Australia are going strong at nearly 600 in the course of a month, New Zealand too, um, and Germany very strong. Uh, quite a lot of usage around the world. Uh, Brazil seems to be doing regularly at around about 20 to 30 hits a month. Uh, contact from the US around about 70 a month, most of that on the east coast rather than on the west coast. Uh, and quite a lot of interest in Canada at the moment, as you can see. So these are the sorts of things that we can look at about the website use uh, and see, or at least it gives us some idea of how widely um, SafeWords is being used. So you see, reflective of the fact that uh, the psychiatric units in Iceland uh, have both in implemented SafeWords. You can see there there's 50 visits a month. Uh, but in Norway and Sweden, we've had very little impact, uh, much more in Finland. Uh, and much more in Denmark. Uh, let me put that away and get on with the webinar, which is about discharge messages. Uh, by the way, if you can't hear me properly, do stick your hand up and ask a question uh, and let me know. Uh, I'm assuming that everything is going fine at the moment. Let's talk about discharge messages. Uh, you can put your hand up at any time, and I'll pause the presentation, and we can have a discussion about the points which are raised. Uh, so there we go with discharge messages. Uh, again, stick your hand up if you can't see my PowerPoint um, presentation on your screen now, as I'm assuming this is all going OK. In fact, I'm going to just check that out with uh, my colleague, Jeff Brennan. Let me switch your microphone on, Jeff. Is it all going properly, Jeff? Can you hear me and can you see me? Looks fantastic, Len. Yeah, really good. Okay, great. So off we go. Discharge messages. Uh, discharge messages is one of the most photographed of the 10 safe wards interventions. I think it... God, what's going on there? Okay. Uh, I think it's because it's one of the most visible... Uh, of the safe wards interventions. It's one of the most public of the safe wards interventions. It's also the one that people are, uh, get a chance to exercise their innovation and creativity about how they do it. Because it doesn't have to be a tree. Uh, it doesn't have to be leaves. It doesn't have to be birds. It can be anything that your imagination wants to make it. Um, and of course, it could be just a notice board with postcards if that's all that you had space for. Uh, but people have been very, very creative with this, and you can see we've had all sorts of trees, uh, and there's a continual stream of uh, postings on the Facebook group for SafeWords, uh, giving us nice pictures of trees and some indication of the types of messages that patients leave for one another. Um, these are the, the examples that I usually give when I make public presentations. Um, so you can see here, always look forward, not back. Things can only get better with the help given by the staff here, and talking helps too. And I was once in your shoes, but I'm now getting better and on my way home. In fact, maybe we should once uh, at some point try and collate all of the messages that people have left via the various trees. 
think if we swapped them all, what kind of typology? That would be a nice piece of research to do. Quite positive. Good project for somebody. Uh, so discharge messages. What's the aim? Uh, the aim is to get authentic encouragement and support for new patients. So from the moment you arrive on the ward uh, as a new patient, there are messages from patients who've departed uh, which are going to be encouraging. They're the sorts of messages which are going to be believed and are much more credible than the things that, uh, that we might say to people as staff. Uh, the other idea is to provide a boost to patient self-esteem on leaving the ward because it gives uh, patients who are leaving the ward a chance to make a valued public contribution. It's a gift, a valued gift uh, that they can leave for other people. Uh, and the fact that they're prepared to leave these messages uh, indicates how useful to them were the messages that were left by previous people when they first came to the ward. Uh, but it's also a high visibility thing, and it's a high visibility demonstration of how patients can help and support each other. And this is how it ties into the underlying safe wards model, which shows that a lot of conflict and containment is generated in how the patients interact with each other uh, and the degree to which there is an amount of cohesion and support between patients, and they help each other uh, as they go through their uh, admission. So the tree is to kind of indicate that patient sharing is a good thing, uh, that patient support is valued, and to encourage people to do it more in their daily interactions on the ward with other, between uh, themselves and other patients who are around. So it's to build cohesion of the patient community and orient the whole of the community to mutual support. And when the community is all oriented to mutually supporting each other, they will be more tolerant of each other's difficult behavior, and they will work harder uh, in order to uh, support uh, and get through the day with each other without arguments dif and difficulties and intolerances breaking out. Uh, here's a pause there to see if there's anybody in the audience who wants to add anything to that. Does discharge messages do anything else? that I haven't thought about. Stick your hand up. Ah, Andy Mott, owner of the famous cat. OK, you have the floor, Andy. Good morning, Len. Hi. Can you, can you hear me OK? Yeah, I can hear you fine. OK, um, nice, to, um, nice to be part of the, well this is the first one I've been able to uh, get to because of other engagements uh, that have been safe wards related believe it or not. <laughs> um, what, one of the things or one of my observations um, around discharge messages particularly with some of the teams that I've been working with is that the actual process of putting together the tree or putting together whatever uh, visual theme um, that the wards have decided to do in their particular ward, that in itself, um, on, on just a basic practical level, seems to bring people together to, for it to, uh, like a common purpose. Um, I've noticed people really getting on board, working in collaboration with each other. I was uh, talking to a ward manager um, a couple of months ago that um, has got this wonderful tree in her ward. And she was telling me the whole story about how service users, engagement workers, occupational therapists, everybody has basically got on board with it. And I think that in itself uh, has, has been therapeutic. OK, so the process, the process of implementation in this case uh, brings together a partnership between patients and between patients and staff and doubtless uh, between staff as well. It's a bit kind of a, an enjoyable thing, and it's, I've noticed it's often one of the first things that people want to do uh, when they implement safe wards. Anybody else want to uh, say anything about or ask anything about the, uh, the, the, make any comment about the purpose of the tree and what effects it has? No, no hands up, so I shall carry on. Um, 
we have some thoughts occasionally of, of fidelity, that is how much people out there are really sticking to the interventions that we've defined uh, as being part of the, um, the safe wards interventions. Uh, so as I've just described, discharge messages is a way of carrying expert advice of leaving patients to those who really need it, the arriving patients. Uh, and the means of providing that authentic hope and encouragement. Some of the worries that, that we have occasionally about discharge messages is that the focus might be lost and it might end up as a process for highlighting how good the ward and staff are and that the messages start to be intended for visitors to the ward. And the other, the other risk we feel is involved in discharge messages is that it might become soliciting compliments from patients leaving the ward to the staff of the hospital to make the staff feel good, uh, rather than it being a means of facilitating communication and encouragement between patients. Has anybody noticed any, any slippage in the focus of discharge messages or any um, misunderstandings of the purpose of discharge messages other than these that, that, that have occurred in their practice. Hands up if you want to say something. Okay, nobody wants to make a contribution there, so I shall move on. Uh, we've got more difficult questions like, oh, we have a question here from Emma Terry who says, uh, obviously we want to allow patients to write what they feel in their experience of the ward. How should we go about negative messages and should we still show those? Uh, that's going to come up, Emma. Can I just park that uh, question for a minute um, and uh, we will carry on um, and, and see when it emerges. All right. Uh, so discharge messages, long-term uh, implementation. Um, there, are, there are issues with long-term implementation with some of the safe wards interventions. I mean, how do you carry on um, month after month, year after year? But in case of discharge messages, I don't think there's an issue about long-term implementation. It's unproblematic to continue in the long term, uh, although it might be a good idea to renew and change the display type from time to time. It could refresh the practice or even you know take the display down for a period and then reinitiate it so that it refreshes people's perspective on it and uh, uh, and get gets things uh, back in the eye moving the display might be another way uh, of refreshing things and making sure that it still continues to work Uh, does discharge messages need any adjustments for uh, different specialities in psychiatry? Uh, we don't think there's any adjustments needed for child and adolescence mental health services unless you have um, ideas differently. Um, the thing that's come up and that um, Paul Burberry has mentioned to me in person and he's here with us today and he might make some comment about is that uh, in places where it's longer term care uh, or places where it's not or much less likely that people be discharged, how do you then operate uh, a discharge messages tree? Um, uh, similar issues are, arise around older people and some different ones as well. Um, in some older people's wards or admission wards where people are going to go home, then there's, there's clearly not so much difficult difficulty, but it might be impossible in others in dementia wards where the patients themselves might not be capable uh, of formulating a discharge message. Uh, and I know Sandra Martin on her wards, uh, older wards in Reading, has done some work about involving carers as representatives. So let's talk about those few adjustments at the moment. Uh, and we will come back to Emma's question, I think it's on the next slide, about how to work with getting the messages from patients and what you do. But Andy's got his hand up, so I'm going to give him back the floor. There you go, Andy, you go first. You have the just, floor. Just, thank you, then. It, it just, just a quick one, really, just, to, um, just a quick response into that very issue. Um, I was in one of our... Um, 
later life wards recently and I was talking to a ward manager about this particular issue, particularly with people with dementia um, that have sort of quite significant cognitive impairment. They're unable to actually perhaps um, engage in writing a discharge message. But what we discussed was the fact that already on the, on the wall, they've got this lovely uh, cabinet with a display of all the letters and cards that relatives and carers have actually uh, taken the time to write. So that kind of is discharge messages, but obviously it's, it's very much sort of coming from the, uh, the, the carer perspective. Yeah, although do, do you not think you could ask the carers to leave a message for patients coming in? I suppose the, the same issue arises and communication of the messages, even if you um, manage to get from a carer something that they think their loved one would have written had they been able to, there is still then the issue of how do you communicate that to the new patients coming in who also might be cognitively impaired. I'm going to give the floor to Rachel Gwither here. She's got her hand up. She has the answer to this. Don't you, Rachel? You've got the answer to this. Are you there? Rachel, you have the floor. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you well. Hi, Len. Um, so we are um, un uh, involved in implementing safe wards in Melbourne, and one of our age units is a residential unit. So um, we've had... Uh, concerns around uh, residents' ability to obviously write messages or understand messages that have been left and also they live there so they're not really discharged. There's very few that would go on to um, a, another setting. So uh, we've definitely got carer involvement um, through um, carer meetings and we were wanting probably to do it a bit more, not so much strictly just a discharge message because people are there more long term so doing it more um, earlier on in the admission so that people um, have the ability to read and understand the messages rather than it being uh, towards the, um, the latter part when people's cognitive decline was more likely to be um, more of a barrier. So that's what we've been doing here but in the aged uh, acute unit we've um, pretty much going to keep it um, as, as is. Um, so that, that's what we're doing here. Okay. Um, some of the other things that I've heard from people are about, uh, especially in areas I suppose like forensics where um, the patients are quite co uh, cognitively capable but they're not moving on as often is that you can do the discharge messages on a kind of a seasonal basis. So you could do Christmas Christmas messages, um, spring messages, summer messages, autumn messages, and change the colour of the leaves on your tree, of course, at the same time. Uh, or you could choose uh, particular celebrations. You could choose uh, Christmas, Easter, uh, various other um, culturally appropriate for the patient group uh, moments at which to solicit and ask for formal messages uh, that you could transfer. Uh, Paul was the one who came up with this question first, Paul Burberry, because uh, he was involved in implementation of safe wards in a medium secure forensic unit. Uh, Paul, I'm going to give you the floor now. Tell us, I know you didn't get any answers really, but what were the difficulties in the place where uh, you were working? Um, I think, can you hear me? We can hear you well, yes, thanks. That's good. It seems really strange, this. Um, <laughs> I think one of the difficulties, and it came from some staff as well, that sometimes our patients get transferred back from a, a treatment pre-discharge area to an acute area if their mental health deteriorates or their risk increases for some reasons. And I felt a lot of the difficulty was with the staff on the ward who thought they would, it would be quite a negative message. But what I've picked up already today, it's not just about actually leaving the hospital, is it? It's about um, the patients communicating with each other and instilling a sense of hope. So I'm going to sort of really think about that idea of maybe the seasonal messages, especially in our um, long-term medium secure service, where patients might stay up for five years. And even when they do move on, they might move on to another form of um, secure care. 
Does that make sense? It does, yes. And you've suddenly uh, you've you've given me something that I've absolutely never thought of before: is that some transfers are um, uh, negative. they're negative transfers, aren't they? They're negative events for the patient because they're moving up or back into higher uh, security, and they're usually doing so because they're more ill, and that means it's an ex uh, and they don't want to go, and that's an exceptionally difficult moment to ask them for a positive message about the place which they might see as expelling them, as it or were. They might, or in some cases, they might go back to a ward where they've already left a discharge message where they've been positive about moving on. Aha, uh -huh, yes. And some staff picked up on that and they said, how do you think the patients might feel if they came back after six months on a, say, on a treatment ward and their risk might have increased or their mental health might have deteriorated? and they find themselves back in an acute area and there's a message on the wall saying how excited I was about moving on or how things have gone well for me. Hmm. But you know, uh, uh, um, I don't have an answer to that, but something no, something, something triggered uh, in that triggered a, um, an idea in me that it is possible, of course, to, to decontextualize uh, some of these discharge messages and treat them as reports on um, inpatient psychiatric care globally. Therefore, uh, it, it might be possible at some stage to upscale discharge messages so that uh, discharge messages left uh, on one ward or in one hospital could be shared with patients in another hospital. Okay, yes, that's yeah. interesting. Just an idea, or it, it might be a, on a whole MSU, like the MSU that you've got now, you could, you could think about discharge messages or transfer messages as belonging to the unit as a whole and duplicating yeah, yeah. them across the whole unit. Okay, that's something to think about, yeah. Um, I know you. you um, I, I can't remember what uh, Eden Field is like, but often there's a there's a shared canteen or some shared areas for patients. It there's might be cafe, possible. Yeah. It there's might be cafe possible cafe. to have a whole unit discharge yes. messages. And and there are places where patients from all areas have the opportunity from all different sort of um, levels of security to the areas have an opportunity to congregate. Um, we do sort of like mixed events as well, so that might be um, a very useful thought. You could have that in the cafe or the gymnasium or even in the family room. Okay, well there are some good ideas going on here. I'm going to uh, I'm going to take away your microphone, Paul, before you come up with too many more and derail my take over my presentation entirely. Uh, and we'll carry on to the next slide. Uh, so uh, discharge messages, difficulties and issues. Um, so uh, what we've had in these are some of the uh, some of the events that we've had and things that we've come across as we've been talking with people about implementing discharge messages. Um, and if we haven't covered it by the time we get to the end, Emma, we will come to your question with this slide. Uh, so uh, disturbed patients destroy the display from time to time. Uh, so if you have a tree, sometimes you'll come across the tree and it will have been stripped of all of its leaves um, and uh, all the messages will be gone. Uh, this is quite understandable if you start to think about it. If you're exceptionally angry uh, about your admission to hospital um, and uh, it's not the best moment to be told how good inpatient psychiatry is, and seeing the messages might um, might be hard to tolerate at that particular point in somebody's admission. So I think we should expect this, got to expect this to happen from time to time, and I suppose it's a good reason not to make your display or your tree too delicate. Um, the other thing we suggested towards uh, in these events is that you always keep copies of your discharge messages, so you can photograph it's easy enough to photograph your discharge messages or to photocopy the discharge messages. So if necessary, you can reconstruct the tree with some messages uh, back on it again and put it up uh, in sure order. Uh, any comments about uh, destruction of trees? No. 
No. Okay. Uh, another risk, I think, is um, the use of platitudes or stereotyped responses by patients. Now, there's a, quite a few of these comments are, are really about how do you get authentic and genuine positive comments from patients when there's a big power imbalance anyway between the person asking for the message uh, and the person giving it. Um, and your reassurances to the patient that you want whatever they genuinely think is positive about the ward might, uh, might not necessarily convince the patient. And I suppose this particular point is around platitude, platitudes and stereotyped responses is uh, that you're actually asking the patient to think of something new, something uh, personal and some personal point of view. Uh, and people can be quite challenged to do that um, when they have the cognitive difficulties, particularly that are associated with things like schizophrenia. I don't know that there's particularly any answer to this other than to give patients lots of time to think about it um, and to engage them in a, quite a wide-ranging conversation about the things that they've enjoyed or not enjoyed about being on the ward that would help you um, nudge them towards something that they actually believed. Uh, any comments about platitudes on the discharge messages? No, no hands up there. I think the, the real risk uh, is one that the patients try and please the staff rather than thinking about um, what they would actually want to say to subsequent patients who come on the ward. And it's really, really difficult to tell, of course, whether a patient is doing this or not. Uh, but I would, uh, I suppose if I was a member of staff doing this, I would have to immediately suspect any discharge message that directly complemented the staff as being something that might be um, not necessarily 100% genuine. I suppose I would want to be absolutely convinced as the member of staff who was soliciting this message that that was absolutely genuine. Um, before I would kind of proceed with the writing of the message. Um, there's a risk here, of course, that um, staff might suggest things to patients that they might want to write, but there's no, there's no point in doing that. Certainly, I think there's a, there's a, isn't there a really fine line to be uh, driven here between uh, eliciting from the patients things and, and emotions and thoughts that you actually know they have from a long observation and talks with them during their admission and say, well, um, you I noticed that you really enjoyed the opportunity to go out in the garden area or whatever. Would you want to say something about that? Uh, versus actually nudging the person into some kind of positive message that you would like to see on the tree yourself from a patient. I think always you have to stress, I think, uh, with the patients that you actually want their real, honest, um, positive message about something they've enjoyed or found helpful about being on the ward. Uh, so it's getting those genuine and authentic messages that's, that, that's what this is all about. Now I'm going to come to Emma's uh, question here. Um, we want to allow patients to write and feel what they want, what they want, and their experience of the ward. How should we go about negative messages, and should we still show those? Well, the uh, the rule of the tree is that it has to be a positive message. Uh, so we're only going to display positive messages in the conversation that you have with the patients around the discharge message. Surely everybody is going to come up with things that they haven't liked about the ward. And surely there are some patients who are going to say, well, there's nothing positive about the ward, nothing that I've liked at all. Uh, if there really is absolutely nothing that a person or is willing to put down that they've liked or enjoyed or anything that they would want to say in terms of positive advice uh, that they would uh, give to subsequent patients, uh, then I suppose they don't contribute to the discharge messages intervention. 
uh, it's not part of the intervention to leave negative messages about uh, uh, about the ward. Um, however, most people have at least something that they've found positive about being on the ward, even if it's an opportunity to get a, a, a good night's sleep, something about the, uh, and some people do, like the regular food and the food that's available in the hospital. Other people appreciate other things. Usually there's something there, I think, which can be elicited. Um, it might, a good direction to go in this case might be to talk with people about what other patients have done for them while they've been on the ward. So then it becomes not an ownership of the hospital or the service, as it were, but some good thing which has been owned by the fellow patients who were also there on that ward with them. And that might help you identify something which is, uh, in the patient's mind, less identifiable with the, with the ward and the staff. Um, so that brings us on to process, really. Uh, and by the way, anybody who's here, stick your hand up at any time or ask a question, and, uh, and we can deal with that as we go along. Uh, process. How do you help a patient identify and express their message? I've been covering that a little bit as we've been going through. Um, but I think the time to start with thinking about what the person might leave as a message is actually quite early on in their, uh, in their admission. And it might be a good idea very early on in the, the admission when you're first showing the person the tree, uh, or if it's whatever the discharge messages format is, when you show it to them and read some of the messages to them, um, that it would be a good idea to prompt them at that point and will be interesting to, interested to know and you'll be able to leave a message here uh, prior to you being discharged. So you're kind of priming patients already for the idea that they might want to leave a message for the people who come after them. The really tricky part, especially on acute admission wards, is getting is the organisational stuff. Um, uh, I think this is probably pretty much the same uh, in Australia as it is over here. The discharge process is complex. It's often delayed uh, and then frequently, suddenly and unpredictably completes when beds have to be found and people have to be juggled around, uh, slept out on different wards on, occasional, on occasion. Uh, sent on leave and then discharged from leave, which complicates matters um, as you'd have to solicit, I suppose, the discharge message at the moment that the, that the discharge became complete. So in the UK, that's often when the patient comes back for a meeting, a pre-discharge meeting on the ward and then gets their final discharge. So those organizational things, I think, although they're, uh, they're a bit banal and a bit ordinary and a bit administrative, uh, are really key to getting the discharge messages intervention to work because people have to think discharge messages at the time that people are actually being discharged, even if that's at the last minute. Uh, and there's a whole load of things that are usually going down at the same time as the discharge. At the same time as you're discharging somebody, you're preparing for the admission of the person who's going to take the bed. You're getting the person's medication to take away with them. You're trying to organize all kinds of things on the telephone. So it's, it's a very busy time, busy time for the patient as well, who's packing up and getting ready to leave and is thinking about, thinking forward about where they're going to go and what things are going to be like when they're discharged, whereas you're then asking them to retrospectively sit down and think back about the meaning of their admission for them and what's been positive about it. Having said that, as I'm talking, I realize that means that that is actually really quite a therapeutic and quite a positive thing to do to look back at the moment of looking forward because it kind of completes uh, the, the, the emotional transition from slight dependency on the hospital to being independent and being back out in the community. Uh, and I realize I'm talking an awful lot there, so I'm going to surrender the floor and give it to somebody else. Somebody stick your hand up and make a contribution on discharge messages. Okay, Jeff Brennan, you have the floor. Hi, Jeff. You, then? Yeah, that's you. Hiya. Um, I was just thinking 
just reflecting on some things you said earlier about uh, people saying negative messages and the whole process of discharge. And it's just to, to remind ourselves that there's lots of other kind of ways in which people can leave feedback. I mean, there's often, if it's a thank you message to the staff, one of the things we were saying on some boards is to have a thank you board in the office, which people can leave a direct message to the staff if that's what they want to do. I think the other thing is that people, if you want to leave a critical message, there's other ways. You know, there's often feedback sheets about your admissions, the complaints procedure, so you can divert people off into those things so that those critical comments can be captured somewhere, but they don't, as you say, have to go on to a discharge message tree because of the positive message of hope for other patients, which is the kind of critical thing. And I guess the other thing about the discharge messages tree is that it ends up being an individual intervention for each patient rather than we're talking collectively here. So it can be a very valuable opportunity to reflect back on the whole admission, you know, that whole idea of it can become part of another conversation about how you stay on the ward bin um, and just, just a real kind of rounding off of the admission. So for me, discharge messages is, is, is brilliant, but it, it kind of sits in with a whole number of other things which, if taken to an individual level, can be really very, very useful. Because uh, my worry, in a way, is that sometimes discharges are unnoticed as well, that people are, are leaving the ward, and it's, it's a kind of a sense of, you know, we're so busy looking at the admission that we forget about the people being discharged. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely to me, yes. So it's, a, it's, an, it's also a chance for a formal goodbye on behalf of the staff, which I think we, we so often miss. Uh, it becomes a, oh you're off then uh, see you then <laughs> rather right. than r rather than some kind of much more um, much more meaningful um, message and yes. wishes on discharge personalised to that post that patient understanding where they're going um, what their living situation is and what they will value about being discharged. Yeah, you've still got the floor, Jeff. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I th I, yeah, uh, and I think you know a lot of the lots of the very good thinking that people are doing about when people don't move on or when when it's longer stay. All those things are. It's really really good to to hear people having those thoughts in their individual areas because it kind of says to me that they're really trying to think about how to make this positive message of hope actually work for the people on their ward rather than. How do we make discharge mess? You know, how does this look for our inspectors? Or do you know what I mean? It, it's it, it's a very important um, positive message of hope from a patient to another patient. How do we make that happen? That's the the core essence of this intervention. Okay, I'm going to carry on unless there's any further hands, which there aren't. So let's move on. Um, on to enhancing discharge messages. Well, I've already, I've already talked about prompting patients to think them of the message they might want to leave right from their admission. Uh, but in between, regularly talking with patients how they feel about the ward and hospital and how they see their admission and what's helping them about the ward and what isn't, uh, keeping in touch with how the patient see th sees things is going to help you when they come to their discharge and you're going to know their perception and you'll be in a much better position to be able to to help them identify uh, what it is they might want to leave as a message. If you know them well, you'll have a pretty good idea as to what kind of messages they might want to leave, and that means things will go much easier at the point at which you're trying to, to get a definite message. Uh, another thing about enhancing discharge messages and making it work is about making sure that the other patients notice it. Uh, so that's about showing them the tree board or display, discussing the messages of others with them, and talking about the messages uh, of people who've just left. So the people who they know who've just been discharged, who've left a message, and that's up on the board, then you can, you can bring that into conversations with patients who are on the ward now, and that, that's a particularly powerful thing that, uh, to do in terms of binding the, the patients together. Um, and generating a real um, emotional sense of mutual support. Uh, Rachel's got some thoughts here. Very good. Rachel, you have the floor, or at least, yes, you have the floor. Rachel, you're on. Uh, so, hello. Uh, with uh, 
with this one, just um, exposed to thinking about enhancing, uh, we've been thinking about making sure that we really utilize the opportunities with the mutual help meeting and drawing attention in that sort of forum um, for people to um, notice uh, any additions to the uh, board or if somebody who is approaching discharge that they are um, sort of I guess prompted in, in that setting and so that we can use it as a way for people to um, be involved and be aware and as you say you know there's going to be people that will be discharged during the course of their admission and, and um, sort of getting them to um, reflect on people that they may have known um, and um, connect that with the message that they've left. So I think a lot, a lot of them, you, obviously you can use the mutual help meeting to uh, support a lot of the implementation, but I think discharge messages just definitely fits really nicely with that one, thinking about the patient community, um, which it obviously is focused on. Well, I hadn't thought about that, but you're absolutely right. That's a, that's a good connection. And of course, the, the, the Safe Wars interventions are intended to interlock and, uh, yeah. and work together in this kind of way. Uh, Brand actually thought about prompting people or, or getting people to notice the discharge messages at mutual help, because just leaving a discharge message is, of course, a mutual help action. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and I suppose it's just about maximizing um, the opportunity and you, you're going to have a, a captive audience at the mutual help meeting and I think it all really complements what you're trying to foster in those meetings. So, um, you know, even looking at the clear mutual expectations, I think it's a good opportunity to, you know, have discussions around that with people. Um, you know, there's lots of, there's lots of opportunity with it. Um, to connect with the other interventions. Well, that's great. Thank you very much, Rachel. We'll progress onwards. Uh, oh, no, we won't progress onwards because that was the last slide. I haven't got any more thoughts about discharge messages, uh, which leaves it over to you in the audience. Any questions uh, or any, um, any comments that anybody wants to add? Oh, Rachel's back with us. Here you go, Rachel. You've got the floor again. Uh, so I, ju I just uh, we, we're having an issue in a couple of the wards uh, with space, um, and I know that that whether it's a tree or something else it doesn't have to be big. But what our adolescent ward in particular, there's really just a complete lack of space, um, and so they were looking at um, having it in a. A, a folder, which I, I know is not ideal because it's not as visual, but um, what's sort of people's thoughts with that? And is, is anyone else struggling with a lack of space? I suppose I was just wondering. We're really sort of having that difficulty, um, particularly on that ward. I'm not getting any hands up from anybody else, but there's the sorts of things that come to my mind is that, of course, um, you could go for a smaller display. It doesn't have to be massive. Um, so messages could be written on smaller items in smaller handwriting with some kind of other display, which would mean that they would fit within a much smaller amount of ward space. I don't know. I'm not. I'm, my creative mind is is drawing a blank on exactly what kind of theme you could do that would make the best use of a small amount of space, but it's certainly that's one way to go. As to using yeah. a folder, um, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's doable. You'd need some way of making the folder special, I suppose, yeah. in some way, some kind of uh, cover for it, um, something that... Um, something that didn't, something that wasn't scrappy, something that wasn't careworn, something that um, that said to you when you picked it up that the contents of this were valuable and were really worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, they did want to make it very artistic still, so um, and get obviously the um, the patients involved in in doing that still as they would if it was a display. Um, and, and obviously making it as creative as and inviting as possible. Um, but that was just this kind of solution that they as a team 
um, came up with due to the yeah. issues with space. Yeah, of course, then you, you could provide people with a, um, a set of blanks for insertion, which were kind of thematically or uh, artistically based, so that there were some pictures in the background and people could write together with the pictures if that's what they chose to do, or some blank ones where they could draw a picture, if that's what they wanted to do, as well as leave their message. So there are still are some quite a lot yeah. of creative things you could do with that. It's just that uh, a folder, I suppose, is more likely to get lost on a ward. It's not as prominent. Um, and because it's yeah. small, the risk of it, it disappearing in its entirety is, would be a bit worrying. Uh, yeah. but, but possible. You've got, the, I mean, you've got the Know Each Other folder, which is being shared. So, yeah, why not? Yeah, and I suppose... We... My my concern was as well that it would kind of get it, um, you know, if there's another folder. Um, I liked the fact that the note of the folder was the only folder because it was, you know, it would be special in that sense, whereas if there's two, I just worry that although they'll be looking different, um, it might lose its appeal, but... Um, okay, no, it's, well, not, it's not quite uh, as public, is it? It's not as you you would walk onto a ward and you would notice it in the same way as you would notice uh, discharge messages tree, which tends to be quite yeah. large. Yeah. 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 Okay. Jeff is Jeff's got something to add, so I'm going to give you the floor. Jeff, you have the floor. Jeff. Um, just, I mean, I don't know. If it, I don't know if this answers Rachel's question, but I, there's a couple of adaptations. But one of the, I mean, this is this is difficult. But one of the places in East London used to do stencils on the um, wall in the garden. That was that was one thing. The other thing I was just just wondering is if you could stick something on a ceiling, maybe, even, or 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 a window, or some other kind of area that could be used as a display, um, or back of a door, even just something. You know, whether if you, if you look at your space, there might be, or or if there's a wardrobe room that mostly you know the people would you go into a lot, but is quite bare or something like that, rather than you know, there, there might be other space areas. But I did do remember in Avon there was one on a window. It was because um, a lot of the offices these days are all kind of windows, and they've given over a bit of the window for for a discharge message kind of board and people had post-its and they stuck it on from the staff side so the patients could see it but uh, I thought that was quite clever. Okay, anybody else want to, got any last suggestions or things that they've observed about uh, discharge messages? No, okay, in that case I'm going to, oh, Jeff you're back. There you go, back on the floor Jeff. <laughs> It's just, uh, just I thought I'd, I'd, some, sometimes patients write quite funny things. And my favourite ever discharge messages was free food, free bed, free drugs. What's not to like? And I thought that was, um, I just thought that was, uh, you know, the nice thing about this intervention is, is you actually hear some things from patients that are that are quite interesting. I think. Okay, with uh, with that thought on the advantages of admission to hospital. Uh, I'm going to leave you all. Thanks very much for attending the webinar. It's uh, been a really fun one, and thanks for all of those who've contributed.